Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chimmy. I make videos every week. Now, my videos every week are usually very different. They're not the same at all. However, the ultimate goal is to add value to you. Today, I wanted to talk about YouTube 101. If you've ever been interested in starting a YouTube channel but you didn't really know where to start, this is your best place. There are quite a lot that I want to talk about, so I've divided it into four different categories. These are the absolute basics that you must know if you want to start a YouTube channel. I've divided into four different parts because there's too much to cover and I won't be able to do it in one video without you getting bored. The first part will be about email ID. The second one will be about equipment that you need. The third one will be editing. I use Final Cut Pro, so this is going to be about Final Cut Pro. And the fourth one will be your YouTube content, calendar planning. I've split it into four parts so it's easier for you to follow and cope up and this is all I'm going to talk about in each week. So if you miss one part, you can go back or you can go forward and look at the other one. These are not full-blown teaching at all. It's not A to Z on how to edit or A to Z on equipment and how to use each and every one of those equipments or how to use an app entirely for YouTube content planning. It's just my experience. It's things that I have learned the hard way. I find that there are a lot of guides for you on YouTube itself and on Google on how to start a YouTube channel, but sometimes people don't really talk about these basics. So I've learned it the hard way and I want to make it easy for you, so I'm sharing it with you now. These are tips and tricks that you won't find anywhere else at all. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out every other week or every other part that I upload. Even when I make recommendations for something, I will leave the link to everything on the description box below so it's easier for you to find it. Part 2 of YouTube 101 is recording a video and uploading it onto YouTube. All you really need to record a video and upload it onto YouTube is a phone. That's all. As simple as that. I've recorded one or two videos with my phone. However, I didn't quite like using it. I don't mind recording it during bright daylight. You know when it's so sunny and nice, you have a lot of light coming in, then the quality of your camera on your phone is good. But if you were to record it at night or in the evening, when you don't have that much natural light, it gets a little bit difficult though. You know, your picture quality becomes grainy and it's not all that nice. And I don't like using such small screens to edit something. It's so difficult to find your video, trying to trim it, trying to edit it, do this and that and everything. I just don't like that. I prefer larger screens, so I normally use my laptop to do all of those editing and stuff. So if you're a kind of person who wants to start off with your phone and that's all you have, by all means go ahead. But if you've already got other equipment or you're thinking of investing in other equipment, then continue watching. I use a DSLR for my video recording. The one that I'm using now is a Canon 80D. I've had this for about 3-4 to four years now and I've got a whole range of lenses that goes along with this camera itself. However, I only use one or two specific lenses for my video recording. Not everything will serve its purpose for video recording. Some are for photos and some are for videos. The lenses that I use for video are the 17 to 50 mm Sigma lens or the Canon 24 mm Prime lens. The Canon 24 mm Prime lens is a SDM lens, so it's extremely quiet. The focus is far quicker and quieter, so it makes the entire experience far more easy, especially when I'm editing it. You don't need to buy a DSLR if you don't want to. It is quite pricey, I must admit, but I've always had this DSLR. I didn't buy this for the sake of video recording. I use my camera for photo shoots and things like that. It's something that started off as a hobby, but then I started investing in it and putting a lot more time and effort into photo shoots and photography and everything like that. So that's what I have and that's what I'm using. You don't have to buy a DSLR at all. You could buy a cheaper camera. You can use a point and shoot camera if you wanted to. You can use a bridge camera. There's a whole range of cameras available. This is my setup. That's my camera along with the microphone and the tripod. Next is a tripod. Tripod is another investment piece. This isn't completely necessary. You could definitely make do with something else, but it's very, very handy. And the kind of tripod you buy is extremely important. Tripods can be very pricey, I will definitely admit that. However, you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of money on it. The tripod that I'm using now cost me about 46 pounds odd, but it's as good as something that would possibly cost you about 200 pounds. It's as good as one of those professional tripods that does a lot of other things. This tripod has so many different benefits to it. You can screw off one leg to use as a monopod, you can extend it, it's really really tall, it's got a rollerball head, 
that turns in every angle possible. So this one will even work for flat lay pictures or videos. It's got a very good grip and a sturdy body. All of the clips and everything are really strong and it's got a rubber base also. So you'll have a grip and it won't slip or slide. The tripod that I had before this one was one of those cheap ones that I bought and it didn't last me long at all. It broke far sooner than I expected it to and I ended up using a faulty tripod. I always have to balance it with something else. It was as good as not having a tripod literally. And then I bought this one and it entirely changed the game for me. If you don't want to invest in a tripod yet, you could use so many things around your house as a tripod itself. I've done it before. I've used books, boxes, usually shoe boxes, to use chairs. Sometimes I've even used pots and pans from my kitchen. If there is a will, there is a way. You don't necessarily need to spend money to buy these things. You can make do with anything else. You just need to think out the box and you'll have ideas on how to make it work. When you have a DSLR with higher pixel, it takes up a lot of space in your memory card. There's really no point buying cheaper memory cards. I've done that before. All of my memory cards were either 8GB or 16GB. I even had one which was 64GB. But when I started taking videos, even the 64GB wasn't enough at all. It would fill up really, really quickly and I had to transfer every clip before I could take another one. When you're in the zone to record, you need to do it continuously. It's inconvenient to stop recording halfway, remove your memory card, put it in your laptop, transfer everything, label it properly, wipe out everything on your memory card, put it back on your camera and then record again. You would have even forgotten what you were talking about before that clip ended. Buying a larger size memory card is definitely, definitely an investment worth making. The minute I bought this 128 GB memory card, I never went back to my 16 GB or even my 64 GB. This literally has not left my camera at all. I've recorded so many videos at one go. I've done so many pictures. I've taken hundreds of pictures for stop motion videos and everything. And it just never ran out. It's like the never ending memory card. And SanDisk is definitely a well-known brand. Guaranteed, no errors no difficulties, no troubles whatsoever at all. Extra batteries are definitely very useful. If you're used to taking pictures on your camera, you won't really need an extra battery. I've been doing photo shoots with only one battery and one memory card and I never ran out and that was perfectly enough for me. My battery would normally last me for the entire day. But when you're sitting and recording videos, somehow your battery runs out really, really quickly because your camera is on for such a long time. You need to stop and start. You need to fix it. You need to adjust settings on it. It is on for such a long time. So it just takes a lot more power out of your battery. If you run out of battery while recording, you need to wait for a couple of hours to recharge your battery and start recording again, which is highly inconvenient. I've done that too. If I put it in my diary that I was going to record something that day, I would charge my battery the night before or that morning itself. So I've got a full charge to use the battery for whatever I wanted to record. But it just didn't help. You know, the battery ran out really, really quickly and I had to keep charging so many times. There was once where the battery died on me halfway through while I was doing a stop motion video and I just couldn't do anything at all. You know, I lost the entire set of it because with stop motion, if you're recording something, you have to do it continuously. You can't just stop, wait for a few hours and come back to it again, especially when I didn't have any lighting kit. I was relying on natural light and it just got dark and I couldn't do anything after that. Buying extra battery packs are not expensive. This set that I got, I don't remember how much it is, but I'll leave a link to it and I'll put the price on the screen now. It's a twin pack, so you can charge both of it at the same time and it lasts for absolute ages. I've now got three batteries when I used to have only one. So I know I've always got full battery when I want to pick up my camera and do something spontaneously. I don't have to always plan and wait for my things to be charged and ready to go. Finally, a remote. This again is another item that is not crucial at all, but it helps a lot. Whenever I'm recording a video, I'm either alone at home or I'm just sitting on my own doing it while Lakshman is doing something else. I can't be bugging Lakshman to sit with me while I'm recording. It may take half an hour, it may take an hour. I can't expect him to not do anything and sit with me quietly while I'm doing this. So I don't have anyone else to focus the camera for me, switch it on or off or change the setting and do things like that. This remote has been really, really helpful. I got it for the sake of stop motion videos, but it's really helpful for video recording itself. When you've set your camera and fixed your frame, you can't be moving up and down, especially when you want to switch on and switch off your camera. You lose the entire frame and you lose the continuity of everything. It's really helpful when you have a remote. You can just switch it on and off whenever you need to. So it's easier, your clips are far shorter 
if you make a mistake, you can stop and you can start again. While you're editing, you don't have to go through the entire clip over and over again to delete off all the errors that you've made. The next thing that I would recommend is a microphone. Cameras are not the best at recording voices. It's got some sort of a hissing sound and sometimes the clarity is not there, especially when you have a lens that is not quiet when it's auto-focusing. Again, this is not crucial. I didn't use a microphone for the first few months and I thought it was completely necessary. I didn't want to spend that money in it at all. But the minute I tested one, I noticed that there was a whole world of a difference in the audio quality itself. It makes post-processing far easier and the quality was so much more better. It's just more pleasant to hear the person's audio through a microphone as opposed to through the camera itself. There are some cameras nowadays, especially the ones that's meant for vlogging, which has a very good pickup rate. Another item which I'm finding more and more necessary is a lighting kit. I started doing YouTube videos somewhere around about springtime, so it was quite bright here. And since it was summer and days were getting longer, I didn't think a lighting kit is necessary at all. But what I keep forgetting is that we are in the UK and the sun always plays hide and seek. Like now, for example. It was fine when I first sat here. I set everything up for the right setting so that I'm not too washed out or not too dark. And the sun has just come out to play now. So I'm a little bit too washed out and the screen is probably a bit too bright now. I don't have a specific recommendation for it and it's definitely not crucial at all but it's something that you can consider if you wanted to. There's a lot of ring lights out there on the market now. I'll probably put a link for something that I am looking at and doing my research on now. You can use ring lights for several different purposes. You could use it for selfie, for makeup videos if that's what you do. You can use it for a sit down video. You can use it for photo shoots. You can use that even for your food photography. Everything I've spoken about so far are equipments to record the video. So you have your camera, you have memory cards, you have battery pack, remote, and then you have a tripod, you have microphone and um, lighting. Once you've recorded your video, you will need to edit it now. There will be bits and pieces that you need to trim out here and there. You want to cut out places where you're thinking, where you stammered and you want to cut that out and you want to make your point clear. And if you're a super confident person who can record something at one go without stammering and stuttering, without having to refer to notes or think about what you're going to talk next or anything, then you're going to have a very easy video. You may not even need to edit anything. But yet again, you still need to add some stuff to it. You probably need to add music, add extra links and b-rolls and stuff to make it interesting. So you need to edit it now and you need a laptop or a desktop for it, whatever. And the software that you would use to do that. Nothing that comes out raw is perfect. No one really puts out anything raw at all because it's not pleasant. You would want to fix a few things here and there before you put out your complete video. And you need to create a thumbnail for it also. If you are a phone user, if you're recording a video on a phone, you could edit it on your phone if you wanted to. There are apps to do that on the phone. But I don't like looking at small screen. I find it extremely difficult to do that and extremely frustrating. I just use my laptop. I prefer a bigger screen. Now iMovies is free. Final Cut Pro is free for 90 days and then you have to pay for it and there are quite a lot of other editing apps available out there. I use Macbook so all I know is iMovies or Final Cut Pro but I use Final Cut Pro to edit so I don't even know iMovies that much at all. Once you've edited your video, you're now ready to upload it onto YouTube. You can't delete everything once you've uploaded it onto YouTube. You need to still keep your original files and the file that you've exported for other purposes. You may want to redo things or you may want to recollect some things from the past videos if you wanted to gather it for your new video. So you have to keep everything. Remember how I was talking about having a larger size memory card for your DSLR? It's the same thing for a laptop as well. If you have a laptop with about 250 or 500 GB of hard disk space, it's still not going to be enough, especially when you want to do YouTube regularly, especially when you take this seriously. You need a lot more space. I tell you, it takes a lot of space. I was shocked by the amount of space I required for the kind of videos that I was doing. I use the 8TB Seagate external hard disk. I share this with Lakshman because he does a lot of video editing on his end and I do a lot of video editing on mine also. And we have a lot of other files that we need to store. 
I've always had this 1TB external hard disk that I use for some of my other photos, my pictures, my files and everything as opposed to keeping everything in my hard disk itself. I found that my MacBook slows down a lot when you keep it full to the brim. So I store things in different places. My 1TB hard disk is just for photos and files, but this 8TB external hard disk is for videos, only for YouTube videos. I have it on my desk at all times, so it's easier to use whenever I need to. This is an extremely long-term investment for sure. These are all of the equipments that I have and that I use. Just because I recommend all of these things to you doesn't mean you need all of it. You can make do with some of it, you can use something else as a replacement if you wanted to. I'll leave the cost for each one of it on the screen and I'll leave the links in the description box as well if you wanted to check it out. Now if you total up all of the items that I have or all of the items that I have recommended, if you total up the cost for all of these equipments, it's going to be really really scary. But one thing to remember is that you don't need to spend all this money at one go. I built my entire kit over the last 5 years. I keep upgrading slowly. You don't need to buy everything that I have and you don't need to get the exact same item. If you can't invest in an expensive camera, get a cheaper camera. If you can't invest in an expensive tripod, use something that you have at home. If you can't invest in a MacBook or maybe even Final Cut Pro editing software, then use iMovies, it's free. The reason why I've done this is to show you what you need, but it's up to you to think on how you can make do with something else if you don't have it. Certain things in the list I feel is extremely important for you to have, but some things are optional. You can make do with something else. There are a lot of people that I've seen on YouTube who actually shoot an entire video, edit it, upload it, do everything just on their phones. I'm not capable of doing that. I would prefer to have a lot of other extra gadgets to help me and support me. But if you are able to do it, then by all means, go ahead and do that. Part three is all about editing. I will be talking about Final Cut Pro, a little bit of tips and tricks about editing and everything else involved in it, which I learned the hard way. I hope you found this information useful. I just want to tell you one piece of advice though before I finish. Don't be too hard on yourself. If your first video is so good that you have nothing else to improve, you've waited far too long. Just give it a go, try something, take a first step, try it and then you can improve yourself. All the very best to you and I'll see you again soon.